Hello guys, good evening. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay. So I think uh, last class we were discussing about the classification of uh, um, collides, right? And 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 we discussed lyophilic and lyophobic collides, I guess. Yes, is it? <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay, lyophilic and lyophobic we have discussed. Okay, so next, uh, you know, the classification we have that is based on the type of particles of the dispersed phase. Okay, basically size of the particles, right? Different size of the particles. Okay. Yeah. So we'll start now. Okay. So next, all of you write down classification of the second type of classification. Class classification based on based on the type of the type of particles of dispersed phase. of dispersed phase. <clears throat> okay. So based on this, basically we have three types of colloids. One is one T multi molecular colloids, macro molecular colloids and associated colloids. Okay, I'll write down this one by one. Just a second. Write down the first type in this we have multi molecular colloids write down see basically i'll tell you what happens in all these uh, this one and the next one that is macro molecular colloids are very much similar okay but the type the you know the type we can say or the way by which the dispersed phase particle we get into this that is the only different thing we have in multi molecular what happens we have very small size particles which aggregates and finally their size falls in the range of the size which is required for a mixture to be colloidal mixture okay so this size, which falls in the range of colloidal mixture, this we get by the aggregation of particles, by the combination of particles. But in, in macromolecular, which is the next type we have, in this we have exactly opposite. In macromolecular, we have bigger size particle that dissociates and finally the size of the particles falls in the colloidal range. Okay, so multimolecular what happens? Write down 
on dissolution of on dissolution of large number of atoms or molecule large number of atoms molecules of a substance of a substance right so in the mixture in the mixture whatever it is atoms or molecules so let's say molecules molecules aggregates molecules aggregates to form a species to form a species having size having size in the colloidal range and when the size in this range the mixture is said to be colloidal mixture right like you see we have an example of sulfur sol okay so example write down in sulfur sol what happens we have s8 molecules present number of s8 molecules sulfur sol we have s8 molecules present which held together by van der waal forces okay size falls in the colloidal range and held together by van der waal forces just we have definition nothing much in this so overall the you know the objective is what the size must be in colloidal range for a mixture to be colloidal mixture so either aggregation or by dissociation both way it is possible right if larger size molecule we have it will dissociate and and will get the size which is in the range of colloidal mixture if smaller size molecule we have it aggregates and finally the size becomes in the colloidal range so multi molecular is a case of aggregation when the molecule combines atoms combines the second type we have which is macro macro molecular colloids write down the definition macromolecular colloids write down in this type of colloids in this type of colloids large molecular mass in this type of colloid colloids large molecular mass are dissolved in a suitable liquid dissolve in suitable liquid they form a solution in which in which the size of dispersed particles size of dispersed particles falls in colloidal range
size of dispersed particle falls in colloidal range. The example of this type of colloids is when we have polymers, okay? Polymers basically involved in this. So example, write down, like naturally occurring macromolecules, we have starch, cellulose, proteins, enzymes. So all these molecules, the colloidal solution that we have, they fall in this range, macromolecular colloids. So could you repeat the first line once of the definition? A first line of this one? Yes, sir. The definition, right? Ah, I said in this type of colloids, in this type of colloids, large molecular mass are dissolved into a suitable liquid. This is, this is what I said, I guess. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Large molecular mass are dissolved into sodium liquid. Okay. A solution you have written. Solution is, sorry, example is uh, we can have uh, colloids of starch, cellulose. All these are naturally occurring, right? Similarly, we can have um, man made also, like polythene, right? Synthetic rubber, polystyrene. All these polymers, the colloids forms, falls in this range. That is, Macromolecule colloids. Okay. Now the third type of one second. Okay. Now the third type of uh, colloidal mixture we have in the pen. Just a second, guys. Yeah, the third type we have in this, we call it as associated colloids. Okay, out of these three, the third one is the uh, relatively more important, right? The third type you write down. <coughs> Next page and go. We have associated Colloids. Okay. In this side, what happens? See, there are some substance. When the concentration of these kind of substance is low, the solution or the mixture that you have these mixtures behaves as the normal electrolytes okay but if you keep on increasing the concentration right after a certain concentration it it takes the colloidal properties okay colloidal behavior due to the again the formation of aggregates so difference from the previous one is what it has the property of electrolytes initially and then after a proper a, a certain concentration it gains the property of colloids okay this kind of colloids, we call it as associated colloids, okay? Associated colloids also known as, you must have heard the name, it is missiles. M-I-C-E-L-L-E-S, missiles. Write down the definition.
there are there are some substance there are some substance which behaves as which behaves as normal electrolytes normal electrolytes normal electrolytes at low concentration normal electrolytes at low concentration next line write down as we keep on increasing the concentration as we keep on increasing the concentration it gains the colloidal properties it gains the colloidal properties right it gains the colloidal properties okay one more term we have in this which you know they have asked this question in neat many times um see when i say that there is a certain concentration minimum value of concentration beyond which it starts behaving as a colloids which is not which is also called as micelles right so this minimum temperature that we have this minimum temperature we call it as critical we call it as craft temperature uh, sorry uh, we call it as critical micelle concentration and the temperature at which this thing happens we call it as craft temperature okay so write down next line into this the formation of micelles write down the formation of micelles of micelles takes place takes place above a particular temperature above a particular temperature correct and and above a particular concentration particular concentration so the minimum concentration that we have at which the formation of micelle starts this temperature minimum concentration we call it as critical critical micelle concentration cmc in short we call it as right cmc critical micelle concentration the temperature minimum temperature which is required here we call it as craft temperature craft temperature represented by tk just this definition you need to memorize nothing much so what happens in this you have a uh, you know you have that uh, colloidal solution when you dilute it right it has this property that upon dilution it again starts behaving as the electrolyte okay so initially you have uh, suppose some liquid
Once you start adding particles into this liquid, the particles will get, you know, dissociates and behaving as an electrolyte initially. Correct. Amount is fixed. So we'll have a certain point, certain concentration beyond which there will be aggregation of ions and finally it converts into collides. Okay, when the again when the particle size falls in that particular range. So for this volume of liquid, that is the critical missile concentration. And obviously, we have certain temperature this, right? When you keep on diluting it, keep on adding water or any liquid into this, then again the aggregates that we have over here, this again dissociates and it starts behaving as an electrolyte again. So obviously for this amount, your certain amount you have added, for that the graph temperature will also change. Critical missile concentration will also change. And if you reach these particular point, then again, it starts behaving as a associated colonies. Okay. See, the best example of this kind of colloids we have, example we have soap solution. Soap we can say, we can say a detergent and water solution that we have. All these are the example of, uh, you know, uh, associated colloids. Okay. Soap, if you take, see here, soap is the sodium or potassium salt, write down, sodium or potassium salt of higher fatty acids. Salts of higher fatty acids. Right. So basically, it has two component in the soap. We have two component. One is the the chain the alkyl chain, and then we have the carboxylate ion COO minus, and we can either take sodium cation or potassium cation. Okay, this is the, uh, this, I'm not saying this is the exact, you know, the formula of uh, soap, right? We also call sodium stearate or potassium stearate, right? It is not the exact formula. I'm just giving an example. And instead, I'll write down like this, wait. I'll give you the specific, uh, in general formula in a better way. Uh, we'll take, instead of this uh, alkyl group, I'll write down here R. In general, right? RCO, O minus, Na plus. Okay. Now, this R group actually it has two components, right? It is the anionic part and the cationic part. So, when you dissolve this in water, what happens? This dissociates RC double bond O, O minus, and Na plus it forms. So, our focus is on this, only this, right? So, let's see this what happens. Suppose we have a random example I'm taking. This is the alkyl group we have, and this is the carboxylate ion. Carboxylate ion. Okay. Now this you see, this is the anion of the soap particle. It has two end. One is this end is water lover, right? So this is hydrophilic head. We call it as. This is hydrophilic head and this entire part the chain the carbon chain that you have the carbon chain is a hydrophobic tail right this carbon chain is the hydrophobic tail right hydrophilic head hydrophobic tail, correct? So this is water repellent. This is water lover, right? So when you dissolve this in water, this end is towards the water and this hydrophobic part is away from water initially, correct? Away from water initially. So what happens if you keep on adding the soap or detergent into water, if you will reach the critical missile concentration CMC and in that particular concentration, it behaves as a colloidal solution. And at this concentration, what happens, the hydrophilic head is, you know, 
is obviously towards the water and this is away from water so what happens it will drag into the bulk of the liquid right the tail that you have hydrophobic tail it drags into the bulk of the liquid if you look at the initial uh, uh, situation that we have i'll just you know sometimes on this particular thing they ask question the mechanism how you know soap works actually so some theoretical questions they can frame on that's why i'm discussing this so initially it was like this. suppose we have this container and in this water is present this is the surface of water we have assumed right so this end hydrophilic end is into the water right so assume this is the hydrophilic end we have hydrophilic end into the water and this is the tail we have hydrophobic tail away from water like this it was which okay at critical missile concentration this starts getting attracted and this is you know this is uh pulled into the bulk of the solution and it aggregates to form a spherical shape right down this point at critical missile concentration cmc i'll write down in short at cmc the anions are anions are pulled into the bulk bulk of the liquid and forms and forms a spherical shape spherical shape with hydrocarbon chain with hydrocarbon chain pointing towards carbon chain pointing towards the center of the sphere towards the center of the sphere so we'll have this co minus outward okay we have a circular thing co minus will be outward this happens at critical missile concentration so this is what happens with the dirt or the oil drop droplets that you have so whatever the oil droplets or dirt that you have it forms a um, it forms missiles around this oil droplet so the hydrophilic part will be into this oil droplet for example you see it is like this hydrophilic part is like this right so hydrophilic part is away and the tail you have it is towards the dirt or the oil droplets this is the oil droplets we have correct so it forms basically a bond between the oil droplets so all this negative charge you see it is it is aggregating over here negative charge it is aggregated over here so around this you see the negative charge density is increasing right all these negative charge particles are repelling each other in all direction these particles are repelling each other in all direction right and then what happens this oil droplets it breaks down into small small pieces and forms the colloidal solution in the mixture correct which can easily wash away with the flow of water and hence the 
dirt or whatever the oil particles we have removed from the surface of the clothes we have understood this point the working what i said in the last that whenever you have dirt particles or oil droplets right so this soap particle that you have it forms a uh, it forms what it forms micelle around the oil droplet this is the micelle we have in this micelle what happens the tail is towards the uh, towards the um, oil droplets and head the anionic head is away from it so all these tails is getting attracted towards this so there are a lot of negative charge ion present around it which repels each other and hence this oil droplets dissociates into small pieces because it will go away because of repulsion all the i know uh, so particles will go away so it will go away with the oil droplets also into the pieces oil droplets will be in the pieces so when you wash with water it will remove from the clothes that is how the soap works correct this is the three types of uh, colloids we have on the basis of the size of the dispersed uh, phase particles present into this now how do we prepare this colloidal solution okay see lyophilic is water loving so water loving is very easy to prepare you just mix dispersed phase and dispersion medium you mix you will get lyophilic because both are attracting no so next you write down but for lyophobic we have certain methods which we use to prepare okay so lyophobic we'll see few methods not that important but one particular preparation method that we have that is important will our entire focus will be on that only okay that is peptidation we'll see so write down the next point preparation of colloidal solutions preparation of lyophilic soul lyophilic soul write down it can be prepared by it can be prepared by it can be prepared by the mixing of a substance mixing of a substance with the dispersion medium directly so could you repeat the whole thing again ha i said lyophilic soul can be prepared by mixing of a substance mixing of a substance with a dispersion medium directly means dispersion medium you have you mix the substance into that you will get the lyophilic soul because lyophilic soul is water uh, it water loving right it attracts water so you don't have to put any extra effort into this right directly you will get so that is the preparation method we have so for example you see if you want to prepare the colloidal soul of starch gum etc so what we do we'll take this starch and we we'll dissolve this in the water basically warm water we'll take and we'll get the lyophilic soul similarly if you want to prepare the soul of uh, of nit sorry cellulose cellulose nitrate then we simply dissolve the organic uh, like the cellulose we have into any organic solvent like ethyl alcohol we can use 
so we can use alcohols or some organic solvent also in order to prepare the colloidal salt correct that's one thing one more term we use over here you see like if we use cellulose nitrate cellulose nitrate and we dissolve this into organic solvent mostly organic solvent if you use like for example we are using uh, what we are using alcohol right alcohol we use it so this kind of sol that we get this kind of sol we use a specific term here we call it as colloidal c o l l o d i o n so organic solvent we are using for preparation of this colloidal okay now easily you can understand the second one that is lyophobic lyophobic sol lyophobic sol you see uh it is water repellent so we cannot mix the two substances and we can get the solution because the dispersed phase will repel the dispersion medium so it is not that easy to form so we have to have a specific methods in order to obtain lyophobic sol okay now since it is water repellent so we could use some uh, you know some substance which works as an as as a stabilizer in order to stabilize the sol right so in this particular thing we also use some stabilizers to stabilize the sol over here so what are the different methods we have by which we can prepare lyophobic sol so just one line you write over here that we use different methods in order to prepare lyophobic sol since it is water repellent okay we use different methods in order to prepare lyophobic sol since it is water repellent okay so basically we have two major two methods we have by which we can prepare i'll write down here only basically we have two methods one is dispersion method dispersion method i'm just giving you this name here and the second one is condensation method dispersion and condensation method right dispersion method again we have of three types that we'll see after this like in the next slide condensation method generally we use uh you know in this also we have different different ways we can exchange solvent and we can get this kind of products right like nacl and agno3 right double decomposition react they may also form this kind of products correct so condensation method is not that useful dispersion method we are going to use mainly in this we have one or two methods in which total we have three methods but two methods they last question condensation is not that important so i'm not we are not doing all all these things right so dispersion method we have three types like i said the first one is dis uh integration which is nothing but mechanical disintegration mechanical disintegration this comes under dispersion method disintegration right mechanical disintegration mechanical disintegration is the method comes under dispersion method or dispersion method we also call it as disintegration method this also the same thing disintegration method or dispersion method are the same thing
करेक्ट मैकेनिकल डिसइंटीग्रेशन व्हाट इज मैकेनिकल डिसइंटीग्रेशन वी जस्ट यू नो रिड्यूस द साइज ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स इनटू द कोलोइडल रेंज बाय सम मैकेनिकल मेथड ओके सो व्हाट वी डू वी हैव टू यूज अ मशीन हियर वी कॉल्ड इट कोलोइडल मिल इन कोलोइडल मिल व्हाट हैपेंस देयर आर टू डिस्क ओके इफ आई शो यू द डायग्राम हियर वी हैव टू डिस्क इनटू दिस लाइक and there is some space some gap in this to this if you try to understand this uh, it is 3d view you understand this part is going into the screen and this part is coming out of the screen so we have two disk like this we have some space between the two right and we allow the dispersed particle that is that is the first phase to pass into this this and the both disk are rotating in different direction one is going clockwise so other one is going anti clockwise okay like this different direction so when you allow this dispersed particle phase particle to pass through it obviously the rotation is in two different direction so they'll crush the particles into small pieces right basically they are reducing the size of the particle and first of all we'll reduce the size we'll mix liquid into this and then again we allow this pass through through the colloidal mill okay and hence we'll get the um, what we say lyophobic so write down it in this three, in this thing particular thing just two three points to write down it is carried out in a machine called colloidal mill colloid mill colloid mill or colloidal mill both we can say it is carried out in a machine called colloid mill write down the solid material the solid material is allowed to pass through the colloid mill which reduces the size which reduces the size then it is mixed with dispersion medium then it is mixed into the dispersion medium which forms a coarse suspension c o a r s e which forms a coarse suspension right this suspension is again introduced into the colloidal mill this suspension is again introduced into the colloid mill the particles are ground down uh, are reduced right now like this the particles are reduced to the colloidal size the particles are reduced into the colloidal size next time a stabilizer is often added to stabilize the colloidal solution right a stabilizer is generally added which stabilizes the colloid is generally added to stabilize the colloid one second right tannin is one of the example of stabilizer tannin t a w n i n tannin one kind of biomolecules substance we have 
okay tannin is an example of uh, stabilizer okay printing ink is one of the example of this kind of substance we used to prepare printing ink by this method mechanical disintegration so this is mechanical disintegration where we are using the machine called colloidal mill right second method we have for the preparation of um this type of colloids lyophobic colloids is we call it as electrical disintegration mechanical and here we have electrical disintegration mechanical and electrical disintegration so electrical disintegration this method we also call it as bredig's arc method b r e d i g s bredig's arc method more important than the previous one as far as exam is concerned okay this is used for the for obtaining a colloidal solution of metals okay write down like this used for for obtaining the colloidal solution of of metals metals like we can have gold silver platinum this kind of metal we have write down the method here in this method in this method an electric arc in this method an electric arc is struck between two metallic electrodes i'm repeating in this method an electric arc is struck between two metallic electrodes between the two metallic electrodes immersed in the dispersion medium both electrodes are immersed in dispersion medium what's an electric arc a uh, electric arc is struck in struck not in between struck between two metallic electrodes immersed in the dispersion medium okay now so since we are giving this electric arc so some of the metal because we have metal electrodes some of the metal because of the high heat it vaporizes right it vaporizes and then it get condensed into the dispersion medium and hence the colloidal solution forms so from metal we are you know 
we are vaporizing the metal atoms by providing electric arc into this which vaporizes and then condenses back into the dispersion medium and will get the colloidal solution right this is what it happens the stabilizer that we use here right that is koh potassium hydroxide we use this question they have asked in bredig's arc method right the koh is the electrolyte sorry stabilizer that we use correct so only this is thing they have asked was koh okay or bredig's arc method used for obtaining colloidal solution of metals these two things you must remember now the third type of uh, you know method we have to prepare colloidal solution is peptidization So is this under uh, dispersion method only, or is it? Separate? Yeah, it's under dispersion only. Disintegration, dispersion, whatever it is. Three types we have under dispersion. Peptidation. So what is peptidation? Peptidation is actually uh, defined as the process of converting a precipitate into colloidal salt. Okay. so we are converting a precipitate and this is what we were discussing last class also in in last a uh, precipitate is converting into colloidal salt so which one that like agi and then agl surround that ha 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 correct same thing right now in this process an electrolyte uh, one second ha huh. in this process an electrolyte is also added which is called peptizing agent peptizing agent usually this peptizing agent contains a common ion usually in general generally it contains it contains a common ion not true always it is not required it's not like uh contains a common ion uh, it is not like it is always required but in general we used to select the peptizing agent like this one contains a common ion so can you repeat it again the statement sorry Sir, can you repeat the statement again? Your voice is not coming, Rajdeep. Not at all. If you're using headphone, earphone, plug it again. Okay, I'll see this. Yeah, I said peptizing agent. Generally, it contains a common ion. right we add a small amount of electrolyte in this which we call it as peptizing agent we add a small amount of electrolyte into this which is called peptizing agent peptizing agent generally it contains a common ion example you this see this a reddish brown colored colloidal solution 
a reddish brown color reddish brown colored colloidal solution colloidal solution is obtained by adding is obtained by adding a small quantity of quantity of fecl3 solution fecl3 solution to feoh whole thrice so like i discussed last class during peptidization what happens suppose we have a first of all you copy down this i'll go to the next slide okay suppose we have a solution of agcl correct basically precipitate we have agcl somehow the precipitate forms and in this in this if you add agno3 agno3 so what happens the precipitate of agcl the precipitate of agcl it adsorbs ad i am talking about it adsorbs ag plus on its surface like this all this positive charge are ad plus so the ad plus here it adsorbs at the surface of this right so all this positive charge are present very close to each other because of repulsion it dissociates finally it means this particular uh, you know electrolyte that you have means uh, sorry but uh, precipitate that you have it dissociates into the smaller particles of colloidal range because of the positive charge present here positive charge will be there but it dissociates in colloidal range So when we say like it dissociates into smaller particles, what are the smaller particles? See any uh, ion we have any atom we don't have the molecules or atoms of it. Uh, AgCl you have, so this will reduce the size. Means you have a lump of this uh, whatever precipitate we have crystal of this no AgCl. So this AgCl oh. crystal only it will dissociate into smaller pieces. okay sir yes and each will have that positive charge on it yes sir got correct so it's the thing that the smaller pieces will fall into the range of colloids and hence it behaves as a colloidal solution so how do we like um, you know control it so that it doesn't dissociate even further um uh, see everything is uh, we don't have any control over here frankly if i tell you why it dissociates because of the accumulation of charge on it okay a lot of charge will be there so lot of repulsion positive positive repulsion will be there in results to this it will dissociate into the smaller particles right what we do here if the what we observe actually if the size is small then the particle you know will be in the colloidal range right it ha it will have the property of colloids further dissociation also possible if you if you you know give more amount of charge on this particle but what we have observed that with the smaller size positive charge on this the 
density of positive charge is not that great as we compare over here, here and here. Correct? So that charge is not great enough, the repulsion over there is not great enough to dissociate this particle. And that's how it happens. And it is stable then. Size is stable then. In some book, they haven't said that it dissociates into a smaller particle. It is not always true. Like if the particle size is not big enough, then it will only take the positive charge on it, right? And it will move into the solution from one point to other point. You see this ADCL with this positive charge, it looks like this. And it will continuously move. It won't settle down the charge over here. Right, so whether it dissociates or not, it is you know not in our hand basically. It dissociates because of the repulsion of the positive charge. And when it becomes stable, it will move and consist the property of collides. That is it. Yeah. Yes, sir. So this is one way, actually. This is one way. It's not like, like I said, that questions that you get in JE, they have asked question on this. Uh, the questions that you get in JE, usually they, you know, ask you questions of common ions over here. Means you have AgCl precipitate, and if you want to form a colloid of this, you will add an electrolyte into this peptizing agent. And this electrolyte must use the question that, you, that they give, I'm talking about. They will give this, must contain a common ion, Ag or Cl, any one you can think. So Ag plus is the common ion. But I'm saying it is not the only way to obtain the colloidal solution. We can always, we can also add some organic solvent into this, right? Now the difference in the two is what I'll tell you because we are going to study now this portion from this only they ask question in the exam. We are going to study about now, now the charge on the colloidal part, colloidal solution. If you remember last class, you know, towards the end of the class, I told you that colloidal solutions are stable due to what? Due to? Repulsion. Repulsion, right. So repulsion will be there when we have either positive charge, only positive charge or only negative charge. So we can say any colloidal solution will be either positively charged or negatively charged. Yes. Both kind of charge won't be there in the colloid. Otherwise it will neutralize and settling will be there. It won't be a colloidal solution. Correct. So both kind of charge won't be there. Either it will be only positive or only negative. So you should know this particular uh, you know, information that which soul is positively charged and which soul is negatively charged. Are you getting it? Right. So how do you know this? Once you have this kind of combination, you see, like I said, AgCl is the precipitate and AgNO3 you are adding. So we have observed, this is the fact we have, that this precipitate, it adsorbs generally the common ion on the surface. So we are adding AgNO3. So we have only one choice that Ag plus will get adsorbed on the surface. And when this happens, the solidal solution is what? It is positively charged. So in this kind of combination is there, you can identify whether the soul is positively charged or negatively charged. Suppose we have AgI, silver iodide precipitate, and we are adding Ki into this. Then what is the charge on the soul? Yes. Negative charge because the common ion is what? Here you see. Common ion is I minus. So this I minus will get adsorbed on the surface. And it provides the negative charge to the soul, isn't it? So when this kind of combination is there, common ion concept is there, then you can identify, you can understand that what would be the charge on the soul. Right. But it is not the only way to prepare colloidal solution, like I said. We can also add some, you know, some um, uh, uh, some, some organic solvents. So in that case, you should know, you should memorize the charge on the soul. I'll give you some examples, some, you know, examples of charge on the soul, but that you need to memorize. Now, this is the one thing, the preparation of soul. One note in this you write down. 
peptidation can also be achieved by peptidation can also be achieved by by organic solvents by organic solvents example few minutes back i have given you cellulose nitrate with ethanol ethanol is the organic solvent cellulose nitrate with ethanol so we'll talk about this stability of uh, colloids now and then we'll see the properties the last points uh, we are going to discuss here yeah. okay just a second Okay. You see, one point to write down next. Oh, the heading you write down. Charge on the soul. We don't have much example here. Four or five we have that you need to memorize. Charge on the soul. the soul can be positively or negatively charged the soul can be positively or negatively charged right so the examples of positive charged soul positive charged soul we have all hydrated metal oxides hydrated metal oxides are positive charged soul example you see fe2o3.xh2o just this charge information you should know why it is important i will i will tell you one more concept we will discuss that is coagulation how coagulation is possible and how we can protect the soul that information you will have once you know the charge on the soul fe2o3.xh2o or we have other metal oxides cr2o3.xh2o for example 2h2o xh2o whatever hydrated it is human blood human blood is also a type of colloidal solution human blood you must have heard the term dialysis right Yes. What is dialysis? What we do in dialysis? So when kidney fails, they um, mechanically they purify it, the blood. Purify the blood, right? The impurities will try to extract from the blood, isn't it? Yeah, right. So kidney is uh, is you know is used to purify the blood basically. So it is. Uh, we will discuss this particular dialysis also in the last. The use of Uh, you know the colloidal soul. So blood is a colloidal soul, positively charged colloidal soul. We have okay. Um, in the soul, we'll have some impurities also. Every soul will have some impurities. So we need to remove that impurities. Otherwise, it led to you know coagulation of soul. Coagulation means it will lose its colloidal property. Correct. Because repulsion won't be there. It is not stable there. The particle will settle down. how coagulation coagulation is an, is nothing but aggregation flocculation right when the particles combines okay the small small particles are there particles combines the size will increase gravitational attraction will be more and the particle settles down it loses the colloidal property right so coagulation you can achieve when you destroy the charge on the soul yes or no because like i said the colloidal soul are stable because of repulsion correct once you destroy the charge then there will be no repulsion no repulsion means the particle will settle down and hence it will lose the colloidal property correct got it guys 
Yes, sir. Yeah. So the thing is coagulation or flocculation, right? We can achieve in 2D two, three different ways. Okay. By adding some impurities, even the electrolyte, which is present there in the colloidal solution, we must have a requisite concentration of electrolyte. If you have the concentration of electrolyte more in the solution, it also leads to coagulation. So for any colloidal solution at any temperature, we must have a requisite amount of electrolyte present into this. More amount of electrolyte also leads to coagulation. Correct. So we also need to maintain the concentration of electrolyte present in the colloidal solution. If it is more, we have to remove them. So basically, more amount of electrolyte is the what is the impurities. It behaves as an impurities. Similarly, in blood also will have some impurities, right? And we used to remove the impurities with the help of some uh, membranes, okay, that we use in osmosis also, right? What is that term we call it as? Semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane. Similar kind of thing also we have here, right? So to purify blood, the function is done by the you know the work is done by kidney. So if the kidney is not working properly, so we need to do it from the outside, right? We use that device to purify the blood in order to remove the impurities which is present in the blood. We do dialysis, right? So we'll have the membrane from which membrane. Electrolytes particles can pass through, colloidal particles does not pass through. So these, you know, impurities passes through the membrane and will separate it. We'll get the pure thing. Blood also will get pure, but uh, blood also will get pure. But again, you have to remove these impurities continuously. In dialysis, we have to clear the membrane after some time. Otherwise, again, when the other side, you know, other side of the membrane, if the impurities concentration will rise it can again go back into the blood. So that will again cause damage over there. So that's the process of dialysis we have. Dialysis works on this thing only, right? Because human blood is also an example of a positive colloidal solution. Okay, so this is the second example we have. Solution of TiO2 is also an example of positive charge soul. So charge is very important. You should know the charge on the soul. Correct. If you get some other examples also, you just write it down and mug it up. Okay, there's no other way. You have to memorize the charge on this. Negative charge soul. Negative charge. So let me just check any other example we have. Oxides of TO2. Huh? We have some more examples. I'll write down. Wait. Hydrated metallic salts we have in detail. Um, basic dye stuffs. Okay, this is the term written. Basic dye stops. So we don't have much example over here. Three, four, five examples we have that you need to keep in mind. Okay, like methylene blue soul. In this only it is methylene blue soul. Example of basic dye stuff. All these are positively charged soul. Negative charge soul, we have the example, all metal soul that we have, copper soul, right, silver soul, gold soul, all are negative charge soul, metal souls. Gold, copper, silver, all these are negative charge soul. Metallic sulfides, Metallic sulfides are also negative charge soul. Ag2S3, Cds, right? As, Sb2S3. Sulfides are negative charge soul. Here we have basic dye stuff. So here we have acidic dye stuff. Dye stuffs are negative charge soul. Souls of souls of starch, 
गम चारकोल जिलेटिन एटसेट्रा आर नेगेटिव चार्ज सो Okay, we know the reason of this charge. That is the adsorption of common ion. Okay, we have other reasons also given, but this one that I have told you, the adsorption of common ion in general, is the most accepted reason, right? Why the soul has this kind of charges. Okay, now um, the positive charge soul of AgCl, we used to write like this: AgCl, right? and we have ag plus like this this is the positive charge soul ag plus surrounded this agcl if you have ag i is surrounded by i minus we used to write this as the negative charge soul negative charged soul so you must understand how to write this this is the positive charge soul okay this is one thing yeah. one more example you write down to this fecl3 is added to excess of hot water fecl3 is added to excess of hot water a positive charge soul a positive charge soul of hydrated ferric oxide forms fe2o3 dot xh2o a positive charge soul of hydrated ferric oxide forms so fe3 plus get adsorbed on the surface will get a positive charge so okay however we have fecl3 ferric chloride and you if you add any oh on this sodium hydroxide see we are adding um water here excess of hot water So excess of hot water we have, and here we have NaOH. Right, NaOH. If you add into this, NaOH to FeCl3, no. So if you have FeCl3, we have added to this, so it forms ferric oxide. Acha. So we have this. Ha. So in this, what we get, we get a negative charge soul. Acha, it is other way. We are having NaOH, and in NaOH we are adding this FeCl3. Okay, so in this also we get an hydrated ferric oxide, which is Fe2O3 dot XH2O, but it is a negative charge soul surrounded by OH minus ion, because is this OH minus ion is present over here? FeCl3 we are adding to it, so negative charge soul it forms. acha now in this only we have one more term like for example you see we have agi right agi agi like this the um like this the precipitate we have and all these precipitate we know it is surrounded by the common ion which is uh, 
which is uh, i minus, right? So we'll write down i minus just next to it. I minus, i minus. I'm taking this example. It depends uh, what you are adding into it. Ag NO3 you are adding or Ki you are adding. If you add Ki, negatively charged. If you add Ag NO3, positively charged. I'm just taking an example of negative charge electrode, right? So we have this. Now in this, we got a layer like this. We have Ag I and then I minus above it, like next to it. So this layer we call it as fixed layer. This layer that we have, one after this, it is fixed layer. And since we have I minus present here, so very next to it, very next to it, we have K plus present here. See this? Very next to I minus, we have K plus present here. K plus, because we have positive negative attraction, so K plus will be nearby only. But this is not very strongly attracted. Right, it is just movable, right? K plus can move here and there. So this layer that we have here, we call it as mobile layer. All these are observations we have, okay? Mobile layer, K plus can move here and there, right? So we have two layer here with different charges. So obviously we'll have the potential, you know, developed between the two layer, between these two layer. This potential, we call it as zeta potential. So here you write down the potential developed because of the two opposite charge, the potential developed is called zeta potential, Z-E-T-A, zeta potential. Another name of the same word, zeta potential is electrokinetic potential. Electrokinetic potential. Okay, this definition you must keep in mind. Okay. Now, two more points we have to discuss over here. Heading right down, coagulation. On this, you will get the question, okay. What is coagulation? You know, how do we prevent coagulation? What is the method for that? This is important. So whatever we are discussing now in the half, in the last half an hour or 15, 20 minutes, on this portion in JE, they ask questions, okay? This is what you need to understand properly. There are a few things obviously you need to memorize. Coagulation, we also call it as precipitation. Precipitation, or it is also known as flocculation. Flocculation. All three terms are same. Definition, first of all, you write down. So isn't flocculation just a special case when it floats up to the top? When it's? When it floats up to the top? No, it's not float. It's, it has nothing to do with the floating. Flocculation so I, is... So, hmm. then, so there is a term then, right, for that, that starts with F? That is a different, that is a floating nature, right, you're talking about. When the yes. floating is different, it is flocculation. Flocculation is aggregation of particles and settling. Okay. Flocculation first is aggregation, which results into settling. And then in turn, it loses the coronal property. Okay, sir. Correct. So flocculation is different, floating is different, which there is at the surface that it happens. Okay. So write down precipitation, you understand. No, that is a formation of precipitate. Same thing you can understand coagulation and flocculation. Same term we have. So write down the definition here. 
the process of settling of colloidal particles the process of settling of colloidal particles is called is called coagulation or precipitation or flocculation correct okay so simply what happens when the particles aggregates right combines then it settles because of its mass that we call it as coagulation in coagulation what happens the particles or solution or mixture loses its colloidal property correct next point write down coagulation of lyophilic sol coagulation of lyophilic sol is very difficult coagulation of lyophilic sol is very difficult is very difficult since it is attracted towards water molecule since it is attracted towards water molecule which forms a layer around it around its particle right on which forms a layer around it around it means around the particles of the colloids and hence the coagulation becomes difficult all these yellow circle that i have done this is water molecule you assume water molecule i'm talking about lyophilic now lyophilic okay see coagulation you try to understand this way assume like uh, we have a colloidal solution we have a colloidal solution so in the colloidal solution we have obviously some charge correct so suppose that we have a positive charged colloid so we have everywhere we have positive charge present and then we have repulsion which does not let the particles settles down and hence the colloidal solution is stable by any means if you are able to neutralize the charge then coagulation is possible no yes see we all know that colloids are stable because of repulsion if you remove the repulsion by any means it won't be stable and then it settles down right precipitates correct so how can we achieve this coagulation by neutralizing charge on it isn't it right right yes guys tell me yes sir. so how so how do we do it one way is what we add excess of electrolyte here excess of electrolyte so if you are adding excess of electrolyte that is what i was talking about that we must have a requisite amount of electrolyte present in this if you have excess of this then the negative part of the electrolyte will neutralize this and then coagulation takes place right so one way is what excess of electrolyte you add another way you boil it another way electrophoresis another way is what uh by persistence dialysis so there are many different ways i'll tell you two three points we have i'll tell you what is what it is so we were talking about first lyophilic salt so lyophilic salt what happens the point we all you know come to this conclusion now that till we have the charge present it is stable you neutralize the charge it becomes unstable coagulation takes place so in lyophilic salt what happens suppose it is a positive charge salt so water molecule is attracted towards it 
so water molecules forms a layer on its surface so because of this layer the negative charge electrolyte if you have any which you are adding here in order to neutralize the charge this cl minus is not you know powerful enough to penetrate the layer created by water molecule goes into the bulk of it bulk of it and neutralize the positive charge so it it could not it actually it cannot you know penetrate the layer formed by the water molecule hence it is not able to neutralize the positive charge which makes the sol stable lyophilic sol stable so this is a reason for the stability of of lyophilic sol it is water loving forms a layer which is not penetrated by any oppositely charged ion hence we say that lyophilic sol is quite stable but this does not go uh, you know go with lyophobic sol because it is water repellent right it water does not form a layer you add an electrolyte over here uh, nf excess of electrolyte it will neutralize the positive charge and coagulation takes place right so how do we prevent the coagulation of lyophobic sol right that is also one case here first of all you see uh the right on next point the coagulation of lyophobic sol can be carried out by can be carried out by boiling just point wise write down nothing you don't have to write down the entire theory over here can be carried out by boiling second one by mixing two oppositely charged sol oppositely charged sol third one by electrophoresis electro p h o r e s i s electrophoresis electrophoresis is similar to electrolysis in which we have electrolyte we allow this to pass through that device in which the electrophoresis is taking place so all the positive charged particles moves towards the opposite charged electrode and there it gets uh, you know um, reacts with the water like oxidation reduction and it gets discharged over there so electrophoresis is that so this three way we have by which we can uh, achieve coagulation of lyophobic so lyophilic it is difficult i have explained you the thing okay ha uh, yeah tell me so what is the spelling for the last word electro so electrophoresis electrophoresis is this electro p h o r e s i s electrophoresis ncert mein diya hoga thoda isko ek baar read kar lena basic concepts is similar to electrolysis ions whatever ions we have if it is positive charge move towards the negative electrode and it will get discharged over there so our objective is to neutralize the charge so that we can achieve or we can get coagulation right so electrophoresis is similar to that one the important one the fourth point you write down on which in j they have asked question what is that question that also we'll see kind of question right done by addition of electrolyte by addition of electrolyte in this you write down when an excess of electrolyte is added when an excess of electrolyte is added wait sir is this under coagulation sorry is this like under coagulation Uh, that is what we are discussing we are discussing by like like what are the ways by which coagulation possible oh okay okay right so three points i have given you i have given you by mixing two oppositely charged ions sols electrophoresis boilings right fourth point is by addition of electrolytes yes no guys yes yeah yes. fourth point right now when excess of electrolyte is added the colloidal particles precipitates due to neutralization due to neutralization 
next line the ion which is responsible for coagulation is called coagulating ion or no flocculating ion anything you can say the ion which is responsible for coagulation is called coagulating ion or flocculating ion so for a positive charge uh, soul what could be the coagulating ion negative or positive negative negative opposite hoga hamesha if you have a negative charge soul positive ion ions are the coagulating ion common sense it, correct now which you know we we have in this we have a certain rule right which depends upon the coagulation capacity of electrolyte that you are adding right this rule we call it as hardy suze rule okay the name is weird but yes this is the name hardy bahut simple hai easy s c h u l z hardy suze rule okay write down write down the coagulation capacity is different for different ions different electrolytes sorry coagulation property is different form for different electrolyte and it depends upon the valency of the active ions active ions means you can say coagulating ion same thing and it depends upon the valency of the active ions so could you repeat it once yeah i said uh, it depends upon from the first line you said first line yes, you have written sir. no sir Achha. i missed that from the beginning you can write down the coagulation capacity is different for different electrolytes is different for different electrolytes and it depends upon and and it depends upon the valency of the active ions or better you write coagulating ion next line continue according to this rule greater the valency of active ions greater the valency of coagulating ion greater will be its coagulating power right so this rule says what that the coagulating power coagulating power is directly proportional to fourth power fourth power of the valency of fourth power of the valency of active ions okay relation is not important you just need to know more valency more will be the coagulating power right so what kind of question they ask they will ask you questions like this we have a soul of as2 s3 for example they can ask you the coagulation is possible with what electrolyte they'll give you four options a b c the ions they will give you here okay or which one will give the maximum coagulation for this electrolyte for example we have uh, alcl3 present al3 plus we have 
mg2 plus we have na plus we have right and um, one more what we can write um nacl right which one will give maximum coagulation al3 al3 so obviously so for this what information you should know if you know the charge of this sole correct that is the only thing you should know if you know this you can do this that's why i said charge you have to memorize and on this only jay ke point of view said this particular thing is very important so questions b you will solve the question you will get the questions on this okay only one information you need the charge on the soul that's why whenever i have given you four five examples when you solve the questions if you see some different soul is there charge is mentioned just write down in your notes if you know the charge four marks will never go anywhere right so very important easy questions you will get so we know the charge on sulfide is what is negative charge soul it is so negative charge soul will get you know um coagulated by the positive charge electrolytes right so positive electrolytes is more positive charge is more more will be the coagulation so obviously it is al3 plus right so this kind of questions you get right so this is the coagulation of uh colloids and then what are the you know how do we know that coagulation takes place for which electrolyte what ion should be there and which one will give the maximum coagulation now how do we protect the colloid from coagulation right how do we protect the colloid so protection of colloids right now next heading the last point we have in this protection of colloids from coagulation okay one way is what the addition of lyophobic soul i'm talking about okay protection of colloid because lyophilic soul is already stable so we are talking about lyophobic so if you want to stabilize lyophobic soul against the coagulation you can add lyophilic soul into this add lyophilic soul what it does this lyophilic soul it surrounds the particle of lyophobic soul right it surrounds the particle of lyophobic soul which you know which uh, which does not let the opposite charge ion on any electrolyte attack onto the lyophobic particles correct so one way is what one way we can add lyophilic soul into lyophobic soul write down add lyophilic soul in this only you write down lyophilic soul are extensively solvated lyophilic soul are extensively uh, solvated which does not let which does not let which does not let the electrolyte to attack onto the lyophobic particles sir could you repeat that it said what that this is due to the fact that lyophilic colloids are extensively solvated extensively solvated and it does not let the electrolyte and it does not let the electrolyte to attack on 
attack on the lyophobic particles. And that is why lyophilic soul, we also call it as protective soul. Okay. Lyophilic soul protects lyophobic soul. What I have written? Lyophobic. This is not done. Lyophobic soul, no, I have written stable. One second. Lyophobic soul. Yes. Huh. That's why lyophilic soul, we also call it as protective soul, the other name of this. It protects the lyophobic soul from coagulation. Okay. Now, if you need to find out the capacity of a protective soul, that is lyophilic soul, how capable it is. If you want to, you know, understand the uh, capability of lyophilic soul, that to what extent or how, no, to what extent it can protect the lyophobic soul from coagulation, we have a number for that. We have a term for that basically, yes. And that term, we call it as gold number, okay? So gold number actually defines the capacity of lyophobic soul, that is protective soul, that how, you know, how it can, to what extent it can protect the lyophobic soul from coagulation. So heading right down, so in this only you write down the next term, gold number. Definition, write down. So it basically, you know, express the strength of lyophilic soul, that is a protective soul. It is a number of milligrams I'll write down it. It is the number of milligrams of protective colloid of protective colloid that will prevent that will prevent the coagulation of coagulation of 10 ml 10 ml of a gold sol of a gold sol on addition of on addition of 1 ml of 10% NaCl solution So if you have 10 ml of a gold sol, right, and you are adding 1 ml of 10% NaCl solution, gold sol is positive or negative? Negative. Negative, right? Negative. You are adding NaCl. So Na plus will, uh, will try to flocculate the sol, right? 10% NaCl you are adding, 10 ml of gold sol we have. Then the amount of protective sol is required to prevent the coagulation of this. That we call it as the gold number for that particular soul. Right? Done? So suppose we have one protective colloid
one protective colloid and its gold number is randomly i am assuming it is 10 it says the number of milligram means 10 milligram we have gold number right gold number is 10 or i should write down 10 only because it only says number of milligram so it automatically means 10 milligram protective colloid one we have and we have protective colloid two Its gold number is suppose 15. Tell me which one is the better, better protective colloid? One, sir. First one, one, because it requires one, one is better protective is because the gold number is less. Lesser amount can prevent the coagulation of the 10 ml of gold salt, right? So power, power if you see, capacity if you see, capacity or power of colloid one is more. So what we can conclude gold number is inversely proportional to protective the power of of protective colloid. Can we say that? Yes. some compounds and its gold number. I'll just write down here. So do we need to remember Did... these numbers? Sorry? Uh, so do we... I have seen a couple of questions on which they have asked this question, like which one is, you know, is a good or better or the best uh, protective colloid for this particular soul. Right, it is given. So sometimes what happens, you can identify this with the charge. If Al3+, plus, Mg2+, plus, Na+, plus, we have, so obviously, you know, if the, if the colloid is negatively charged, you can say Al3 plus is the best one. But yes, uh, when the question is all about, when the charge is same, then you have to go by gold number, right? So that Al3 plus will, what it does, it will coagulates. Na plus, will coagulate the least among the three. So any plus we can go for that if the question is like that. But if the question is directly also one question I have seen they have asked that which one has the maximum gold number like this or which one has the maximum protecting protective power. These kind of questions you have to do by gold number. So, you know, you don't have to memorize it. I don't see it is that important because only a couple of time I have seen this kind of question they have asked. So it is not important, but yes, one or two example, you should keep in mind that this one is the best one. This one is the least one like that. I'll give you some examples you can do. Gelatin, you see the gold number is 0 0.005 to 0 0.01. If you talk about hemoglobin, the gold number for hemoglobin is 0 0.03. So which one is better in this two? Gelatin. Gelatin. Gelatin, right? Gold number is least over here. Gum Arabic. Gum Arabic. 0 0.15, not important at all. Egg alu albumin. This, this kind of question they ask in CET kind of exam. Okay, so once you prepare for CET, so this chapter and then polymers, biomolecules also like the protein related questions, those kind of portions you must, uh, you know, revise. Egg albumin, its gold number is from 0 0.08 to 0 0.10. Potato starch, 25, okay, starch only.
25 to 50. So basically in general, you can just keep this in mind that gelatin is a very good, you know, protective colloid. Starch is not a good protective colloid. But yes, when you prepare for exams like CET and all, this kind of, this these portions are important. They ask questions directly from you. Okay, so we are done with this chapter. This is what we need to do. Apart from this, we have some more things like gels, emulsions, right? Those definitions you can go through. Emulsions, you already know. Milk is an example of emulsions, right? So I'm not giving you those things. And everything we have covered in this, we have done in so detail. Just go through the questions once. Okay, you will have the idea of the important portions in this chapter. You don't have to revise this chapter on a daily basis. But yes, before the exam, like I said, hardy suze rule, right? Charge of the collide, okay? And adsorption, absorption, graph comparison, graph that you had, those things plus this one, the last half an hour that we discussed. These things are important for JE. So you can revise these things before the exam. Correct? So we'll start next, the practical organic chemistry. Qualitative, quantitative analysis. We also call it as salt analysis. Correct. Salt analysis, the radicals, you know, oh, just a second. 